All right, guys, the first season of the solo leveling anime has just finished. So let's take a look at the physique of the main character, Song Jinu. I want to start off by saying this isn't a lot of muscle mass. This dude is not massive, although he might look like it. It's actually his leanness that makes him look so impressive. I think most people training in the gym can reach this level of muscle mass quite easily within one or at most two years. The real challenge is dropping enough weight that you can reveal all of this lean muscularity. And there's not much crazy about his proportions either. His chest, I mean, it looks pretty flat, to be honest. It's nice and defined. Uh, it's usually on the display so we will train this a fair amount because it's a pretty prominent part of his physique given that you see it most of the time and similar to that also his abs are very important of course abs are made in the kitchen but if you train your abs and kind of build them up and get them to bulge out more you're going to see them even at a higher body fat percentage also important are his serratus muscles which is like just underneath the armpit as you can see here some people confuse it with the rib cage those muscles tend to get developed from things like punching things where you're raising your arm up in front of you in the scapular plane. His arms are pretty skinny, they're nice and defined, they're not huge, they look good, but it's not like a bodybuilder level of arm size. His shoulders are also okay. His neck is skinny, so that's not really something we have to worry about. His traps, he seems to have good insertions for his traps, they're not like massive bulging, but still might be good to train them. We don't really get to see much of his back, but we can assume he has an okay back, it's not like overly important, but we're still going to train it because we're not neglecting any muscle group. And a couple of the anime screen shots here can't see much but he's doing push-ups so decent chest uh, abs and then here while he's doing sit-ups showing off his chest and abs again so those are probably the two most important muscle groups but other than that you just want to get really lean it's the leanness and the nice proportions that make him look so good and i'll talk later in the video about how to drop down to a decent body fat percentage i'd say he's probably around 10 percent body fat that is a good goal to aim for if you want to get this appearance So I've put together two programs to help you build this kind of physique. And like I said, you don't need a massive amount of muscle. But if you get to a decent level of strength in these exercises that I'm about to describe, you're going to build a solid amount of muscle. You might even get bigger than this guy within a year or two of training. These are both upper lower programs. So it's four days a week, two days upper body and two days lower body. One of them is a program that you can do in the gym with weights. And then one of them is a body weight program where the only thing you need is a pull up bar. But more on that one later. Later. If you want a way more in-depth program for a similar physique, check out my Toji and Garo physique programs in the description. For now, the gym program. So we'll start on Monday with an upper body day, beginning with a bench press with a barbell, five sets of five to eight reps. Five sets might seem like a lot, but we want to reach about 10 sets for each muscle per week. So we've got five sets of bench press on Monday, and then on Thursday, there's five sets of weighted dips, and that's all the chest work we're doing. After bench press, you'll hit some weighted pull-up. That's really good for your lats and your biceps if you can't do them weighted don't worry just do body weight if you can't do body weight then just do assisted body weight or negatives and eventually you'll build up to the level where you can do weighted pull-ups then we switch to overhead press for the front delts so bench press targets front delts pretty well but then overhead press is much more specifically focusing on front delts triceps a little bit not much chest involvement and then we go back to another pulling exercise with a bent over row and this is great for your back especially your upper back and then dumbbell shrugs for the traps and finish off with hanging knee raises and that'll be targeting your abs so i haven't included any curls or tricep extensions so no arm isolation in this program because i don't think it's that important for this physique if that's very important to you then you can add in some arm isolation on tuesday now the first lower body day of the week we've got some very basic leg exercises the barbell squat for like your quads and glutes this is just an amazing exercise for packing on mass on your legs and honestly your whole body after that will be deadlifts for your posterior chain so your hamstrings glutes your spinal erectors forearms upper back even these two are pretty much the best like bang for your buck leg exercises that you can do in terms of strength at least and then since we don't want to skip calves we have four sets of calf raises and then you finish off with a side plank which is going to be good for your obliques and the muscles on the side of your abdomen on wednesday you can do sprints so this is going to aid your fat loss and i'll talk more about the sprints later and then thursday the second upper body day of the week weighted dips again for your chest if you can't do them weighted then 
there just do body weight if you can't do body weight then do assisted and if these really hurt your shoulder or something you can replace them with push-ups preferably deficit push-ups so your hands are elevated up on like two raised surfaces so that you can get a deeper range of motion at the bottom of that push-up and then a weighted chin up so this is like a way to pull up but your hands are palms upward and that's going to place more emphasis on the biceps again like the way to pull up if you can't do these weighted just do body weight or assisted after that is incline dumbbell bench press so this is more upper chest but also a lot of front delt since we're already doing a lot of front delt work in this program with bench press overhead press and weighted dip i didn't want to put another direct front delt exercise in here but incline dumbbell bench hits it very well but we'll also hit that upper chest and then we have a cable row so with these i find it much easier to isolate the back and the upper back because with normal barbell bent over rows your hamstrings are involved quite a lot your lower back will probably fatigue quite early on which can limit your uh, focus on the lats and the upper back which is what you want to focus on so with seated cable rows you don't have that problem and then another few sets of dumbbell shrugs for the upper traps and then finish with a long lever plank for your abs on friday the final lower body day squats again because they're pretty much just the best all-round quad exercise romanian deadlifts which i do much prefer to normal deadlifts for your hamstring and your whole posterior chain hypertrophy the weight you use here is not going to be as much as in a normal deadlift so the focus should be on strict form stretching the hamstrings and doing higher reps and then calf raises again uh, ideally some kind of bent leg variation because the soleus can only really be hit with exercises where your knee is bent and you're doing calf raises so one standing calf raise variation and one bent leg variation is ideal for hitting the calf as a whole and then finish with lying leg raises for your abs so since abs are so important we've hit them four days a week we've hit a lot of chest as well and a good amount of back too so we're gonna have a nice v taper most horizontal pushing exercises are going to train the serratus pretty well also long lever plank and although this character doesn't really have much leg muscle at all we're doing like the minimum amount of leg work that you need to do in order to be strong and athletic and healthy and well proportioned because no one wants to have chicken legs and next is the body weight program which is pretty much just the same as the last program uh in principle but i've just changed out the exercises for body weight versions so on monday we had a horizontal push at the start so now we've got push-ups which are the equivalent of bench press for the rep range i've put sets of 5 to 30 reps this is the rep range that seems to be most effective for hypertrophy as long as you go close to failure sets of 5 all the way up to sets of 30 produce equal amounts of hypertrophy so you could do a set of 8 a set of 20 and a set of 30 and if all of those were pushed within like one or two reps of failure they would all produce the same amount of hypertrophy Lower rep sets do make you stronger because the weights that you're handling are heavier and strength is more of a skill and requires more neural adaptation so you get good at moving heavy weights by moving heavy weights but for hypertrophy you just need to go close to failure and since i don't know how many push-ups you can do anywhere between five reps and 30 reps is going to be good as long as it's close to failure if you can do more than 30 reps in each set then you might want to add some weight or move on to a harder variation so that you can try and keep it within that five to 30 rep range you want to be hitting failure or close to failure somewhere between 5 and 30 reps ideally i would say about 15 reps or so for calisthenics movements maybe like 10 and for harder movements like pull-ups between like 5 and 15 so push-ups that's good for chest and all the pushing muscles next is pull-ups similar to the last program uh, but we are not doing them weighted this time unless you want to do them weighted that is ideal to be honest i would prefer you do them weighted but if you don't have access to that just do high rep pull-ups and then pike push-ups these are are very good for your front delts like the overhead press i mentioned earlier even better would be handstand push-ups but they're quite advanced and then inverted rows which is a horizontal pulling movement really good for your lats and really underrated this is kind of an easier version of a pull-up but it's still actually very hard even for guys like me who can do like 15 or more pull-ups inverted rows if you take them close to failure they're really effective and then finish off with hanging knee raise and all of the ab exercises are going to be the same as the previous program on the first lower body day we'll start with with jump squats for legs i would much prefer you use uh, weights if you have access to them just to make them harder because legs are very strong and it's hard to reach failure before like 30 reps you can probably do dozens and dozens of bodyweight squats i've done over 200 in one set before and i could have kept going it's purely mental really when you're doing bodyweight squats so you want to make it as hard as possible by doing things like jump squats ideally holding some kind of weight or just doing barbell back squats that's the ideal 
And then Bulgarian split squats. Again, the rep range is five to 30 reps for each leg. I don't know how many you can do. Ideally, you'd do about 10, 15 reps per leg. And again, you can make that harder by adding weight, holding dumbbells or something, or using a weight vest. And then the best calf exercise with just body weight is probably single leg calf raises because it's just harder than regular double leg body weight calf raises. And then finish with side planks. Sprints on Wednesday. On Thursday, we will do dips again. Ideally, do these weighted if you have access to a weight belt or a weight vest. And then chin ups, so more of a focus on the bicep and then decline push-ups for like the upper chest and the front delts, inverted row again for the back and long lever plank for the abs. Then on Friday we have jump squats again for like the quads and glutes, walking lunges. I really like doing these with weights uh, for higher reps. You get an amazing burn in like your hamstrings, glutes and your quads, just your whole legs. And then single leg calf raises again followed by lying leg raises. And on Saturday do sprints and the same in the gym program as well. Sprints on Wednesday and Saturday and then you rest on Sunday. You don't need to be in the gym like six days a week doing you know 10 sets for each muscle like every session. That's excessive and it's unnecessary. If you get a few good quality sets in like twice a week, by that I mean close to failure with a good amount of rest between each set, not like one minute. I'm talking at least two minutes rest between each set so that you can put up a good performance in every single set. That's going to be more productive than doing like 10 sets with 30 seconds rest in between. So now I'm going to cover a couple of sprint workouts that will help you to lose fat because getting lean is really the most important part of this physique. This first workout is basically what's known as a lactic power interval. You can check out my video on MMA conditioning if you haven't already for more of an explanation of that but this workout has been shown in studies to increase your growth hormone by 700% and growth hormone enhances fat loss. So doing workouts like this is going to be really helpful for burning calories first of all but also increasing your growth hormone which is going to help with fat loss. So you do a warm-up like jog around, warm up all the muscles that you're going to be using while you're running, which is pretty much every muscle in the body. Do some dynamic stretching, do a few progressively faster jogs and sprints until you're getting up to a decent level of intensity, like 60, 70%. And then you do 20 seconds of max effort sprinting. This doesn't mean max speed. It means you run as fast as you can for 20 seconds. You're going to slow down towards the end of that rep. And that's fine. That's the whole point. What we care about is that you're outputting at maximum intensity. People seem to be very confused by the difference between max effort and max speed. You can only maintain max speed for like 10 to 20 seconds and you need long rest breaks between those reps if you want to keep maintaining high levels of speed. In this workout we are not resting very long, we're just resting 90 seconds which is just about enough time for you to get your breath back and then you go again. So this is not a speed workout, this is training your ability to output at high intensity for quite a long time with little rest. So you repeat this this rep for a total of eight rounds and sprint workout number two now this is going to build your maximum speed and the idea here is you warm up like before and then you sprint for 10 seconds at maximum effort so this is going to be close to top speed and then you fully recover which might take upwards of five minutes ideally you get your heart rate below 120 beats per minute so you do your sprint at max speed and then you fully recover after and then you do it again and do that for a total of five rounds and that's going to help with enhancing your max speed but any kind of interval training like this at high intensity is going to be good fat loss for improving your cardiovascular fitness for growth hormone testosterone even high intensity interval training is great and you should be including i would honestly say prioritize that over a lot of low intensity long duration training i love doing low intensity steady state cardio but if you overdo it it's terrible for your hormones the calorie burning aspect of it i think is overrated in my opinion you want to enhance your metabolic rate rather Rather than trying to burn calories through more exercise or restricting your caloric intake, I think you want to enhance your body's metabolism. I'll just go through a few things you can do to enhance your metabolism. I won't spend very long on any of these because this will be a very long video otherwise. If you want to learn more, just search the thing I mentioned followed by something like metabolism benefits. You want to build muscle, definitely. Include more movement throughout your day, like walking and standing instead of sitting all day. Improve your thyroid function, that's very important. Thyroid is the main governor of metabolism include coconut oil in your diet get co2 in your body by drinking sparkling water or by doing buteco breathing or bag breathing eat raw honey and fruit drink coffee get sufficient protein from meat organs seafood and eggs and make sure you're getting enough salt intake and obviously you shouldn't be eating a lot of processed foods try and get just whole foods where possible that means one ingredient just meat or just fruit or just eggs some lightly processed
this stuff is fine like freshly baked bread as long as it doesn't have a bunch of preservatives and additives and all that for this information about metabolic rate i credit dr ray pete you can check out his work in the description but the gist is you want your body to be active like your cells working hard burning energy rather than kind of stagnating and conserving energy metabolism is kind of like a fire inside you and you want that fire burning bright it's going to eat through all of your fat and a lot of the food that you're consuming as well so you're going to be able to eat more calories because your body is just going through more calories for its basic functions besides that to lose fat you can use a small caloric deficit of no more than 500 calories below maintenance any more than that in your metabolism is going to get screwed up you should definitely walk at least 10,000 steps a day that's quite a lot especially for americans i know you guys don't really live in walkable cities but if you can get 10k steps in a day that's really going to help your metabolism and just burning calories and you'll be getting sunlight which is indirectly good for metabolism too and yeah just staying active standing rather than sitting and walking about rather than driving but I've gotten a little bit sidetracked. If you want to look like this guy, do the workouts that I described in this video. Build those muscles that are important for this physique, although you really don't need a lot of size. You just need to get very lean by doing sprints, being a bit more active in general, and enhancing your metabolism with certain foods, getting sunlight, and preventing stagnation in your body and your mind. You've got to keep things moving. I hope you find this helpful. It should be encouraging for you to know that this is a fairly easy physique to achieve, in my opinion. In terms of muscle mass, you don't need a lot. Getting lean is probably the hardest part although if your metabolism is on point that's not even a challenge let me know if you go for this physique and tell me about your progress along the way thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one